I've got over here a 2019 fully loaded Escape Titanium. And off over here, I've got a fully loaded 2020 all redesigned Escape Titanium Hybrid. So I wanted to show you the differences between these two vehicles. You might be driving an older style Escape or might have fell in love with them like most of Canadians did or people on the island here. But I'm going to tell you why you're going to love this all new 2020 uh, because there's some really, really neat features. Let's first start off with styling. So on the styling front, and it's pretty easy to see that these vehicles are the same color. So they kind of show how the, 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 the color scheme actually works with these two vehicles. So starting off with the headlights, you'll notice uh, a big difference between the 19 to the 20. So uh, both of them have projector style headlights, uh, but the 2020 has a much larger uh, headlight, uh, being able to give you some uh, more visibility uh, than the uh, previous model. So quite a bit of difference just right there. Now, uh, they both have this, the neat blacked out grill with a chrome uh, surrounding. The, uh, they both have uh, sensors in the front of the vehicle, as you can see. So that's when you're pulling up to something. Uh, it gives you an alert that you're uh, about to hit it on slow speeds, uh, obviously. All right, so one of the things I wanna show you uh, is what's on your person, what's on you. Um, and it's always really important is the feeling of the key. So there's a big difference between the 2020 and the 2019. First, starting off with just uh, the size of it. So one's a little bit uh, thicker and um, um, it's got a little bit more uh, a little square than, than the previous 2019. Uh, the functions on them are pretty similar, how they work, uh, but there's some pretty neat things on the 2020 key versus the 2019 that doesn't have. They both have the panic button to, to, to find once you're in a panic at the grocery store and you can't find the vehicle, why you would use that one. There's the panic button. Uh, they both uh, open up the rear hatch. They both unlock the vehicle. They both lock the vehicle and they both uh, have a remote start. But there's one functional difference between the, uh, the 2020 and the 2019 is that when you go to start the vehicle, you'll notice um, on the 2020, it's actually got this uh, little LED indicator. So if I go to start the vehicle, you'll notice that it actually goes green. So that says the vehicle is actually started. It's, it's got a, it's a two way control. So it actually tells you that the vehicle started. And if I turn it off, so if I click it again, it's gonna go red. It's a little, did it go red? Yeah, there it is. So it flashes red. So it basically tells you if you turned off the vehicle. Uh, the other thing uh, versus the 2019, it doesn't do that. You know, it, it, it starts the vehicle, but it actually doesn't tell you something that was available on both vehicles and continues to be available is our Ford Pass. So Ford Pass is an app that you have on your phone. You can start off your vehicle. You can uh, um, you could lock, unlock. You could do a couple different things uh, to that. You could get details uh, about your vehicle. Um, it goes into how many kilometers it has on it, how much, uh, what's your range that you have in it. It could notify you of recalls. It's a really, really neat feature. One of the neatest parts about uh, Ford Pass is uh, scheduled stop. Uh, sorry, one of the neatest parts about Ford Pass is your scheduled start. So let's say you were leaving for work every day at eight o'clock in the morning and throughout the winter time, you wanna have a warm car. You could set it like anytime you want, but you could set it like 15 minutes beforehand. And so at 7.45, that vehicle will start up every single morning at 7.45 or whichever day of the week you want it to. And automatically you jump in that vehicle at eight o'clock and bang, it's nice and warm. So that's a pretty neat feature of uh, Ford Pass. Uh, again, you get all those other uh, cool features with uh, remote unlock or lock, and you can do that anywhere in the country, basically. You can start your vehicle from the other side of Canada. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but uh, you still can. You could actually even tell where it's, at, where it's at, where it's located. So if you've got kids and they're driving your vehicle, you could take a quick look on your phone. You could find out that you know Johnny's at uh, Missy's place, and you might not want Johnny at Missy's place, uh, but that's up to you to decide. Anyways, uh, some of the neat features, uh, the key and also the key that you'd have on your phone. I want to show you some of the things on the inside of the vehicle uh, because there's some really, really key, key things. So starting with the 2019, check out the seats. So this has got leather trimmed on the seats and it's got a cloth um, middle to it. Now, uh, the 2020 has an all leather, so you're going to see the kind of the difference between that. Uh, the, the dash. On this one, it has a standard 
uh, basically dash with your uh, RPMs and your speedometer and it's got a, a display in the middle. Um, and you're gonna notice on the 2020s, there's a big departure basically from what we've got here. It's got a, a, a push button start, um, just like the all new 2020. That's a little bit different location. It's got uh, heated seats, it's got air conditioned seats, it's got navigation built into it. Uh, coming in the back and taking a look up here, it's got a full moon roof. Um, it basically lets in a whole bunch of light on the inside and makes it feel more, uh, more spacious and airy. Coming to the back of the vehicle, um, the rear seats fold down um, and basically uh, recline um, and you're going to notice a little bit of difference between the 2020 uh, and that. It's got a power inverter in the back and so that's any accessories that you want to put on um, and run from the rear seat as well. It's got a uh, power lift gate and you're able to do that with the key, you're able to do that with the actuator in the back or you're able to just kick uh, the rear, uh, rear of it. I don't have the key on me, so you have to have the key on you to be able to do that. Uh, push the button, that comes down. So this is the 2019. Um, they started building this model in 2013 and went all the way to 2019. And they had a mid-year kind of a um, mid-year refresh. Uh, and uh, basically since then, it's pretty much been the same vehicle. But now they went to the all redesigned Escape. Now. What's neat about this one, what's particular about this one, is that it's actually a hybrid. So you're gonna see that here. The only way you can really tell it's a hybrid is uh, when you're driving down the road is that rear, uh, on the rear tailgate. What's really cool about the hybrid um, um, versus the, um, the 2019 uh, titanium is that for about the same price, uh, the, the MSRPs, about $42,000 for a 2020. It was about $42,000 for a loaded uh, titanium uh, escape. So for about the same price, you're getting uh, a, a brand new vehicle with a hybrid technology, which is pretty cool. So, and there's some really neat features about this hybrid technology. So let's come in the inside, take a look at the leather seats, uh, full uh, leather seats all the way through. Um, it's got uh, uh, a really comfortable feel to it. Uh, the seats are, are uh, super ergonomic. It's got some nice bolsters on the side of them. What you're going to notice from the dash is it, it's so much cleaner. There's, there's like more features and options that you have in the vehicle, but it's a lot less clutter. There's a lot less kind of buttons flowing all over the place and it's mostly based on the display. So you're going to notice here there's two displays and I'm going to uh, start the vehicle. So you start that with the uh, uh, the, uh, the push button start right here and the vehicle now turns on you won't hear any engine noise from it one of the neatest parts about this is the dash take a look at the dash that's a full screened in uh, dash that has uh, different display modes that you can you can have so uh, down here is a, a couple different uh, drive modes and if I hit that you'll notice that the dash actually changes so that's normal mode now we go into eco mode and it's going into eco mode. It gives you a different function and see how that activates. Pretty cool. Now we go into sport mode and it goes into that red. It's got the checkered uh, flag in the back and now gives you a, another feature, another view uh, that you might not have and also how the engine dynamics actually work are a little bit differently. Then you go into slippery mode. Look at that. It's giving you some like uh, snow features. Uh, to it. That's pretty cool. And then um, you go into deep snow or sand, uh, which is another feature. And we go back to normal mode. Uh, some pretty cool things here. Uh, while you're driving the hybrid, um, it's got something called brake coach. So if you're in eco mode, and I'll switch that to eco mode, uh, it's got a little function in there that you can keep the vehicle in its optimal range to use as much electric power that you possibly can. So as you're accelerating, it's basically to say, do not accelerate any more than this or else you're going to uh, use your, uh, your um, gas engine to, to help propel the vehicle. 
when you're stopping, it's telling you don't hit the brakes so hard because if you do, you're gonna actually use uh, the brake pad and rotors rather than the regenerators, uh, a regeneration that's, that's coming off of uh, that kinetic energy uh, to recharge the batteries. So it actually tells you uh, how efficient you are driving this vehicle and how much, uh, how much fuel economy you can actually save with this hybrid technology. What's, what ne what's neat about the, the all new 2020 uh, Escape, and the Escape came out as a hybrid uh, years and years ago, it was one of the first SUVs that, that came out in the old generation, or two generations ago, um, that the difference is, is night and day. The hybrid technology now, um, you, can, you can use this vehicle and it's on battery uh, power for quite a bit. Uh, compared to the old ones where it was kind of just switching on and off from gas to electric. So you can see that the uh, the electric motor and the battery is uh, significantly larger so it can kind of propel you through and it gives you a lot more power. Um, the uh, pop-up display, that's a big uh, departure from uh, our 2019s. It's got a big giant display that sits up in the middle and it, it's got this nice clean dash here. You got your uh, audio controls up here, you got your, your power here. And then coming down, we've got um, uh, basically our uh, automatic uh, HVAC system. You could set the actual temperature and it will just maintain that temperature when you're on uh, auto. I just hit that button, you heard the, the engine start up and that's because it's saying, hey, I'm gonna require some power in, able, in order uh, to do that. It does it automatically. You don't have to hit another button. It figures it all out for, your, uh, for you. So over here on the steering wheel controls, We've got a couple uh, 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 neat things that are not on the uh, on the 2019. So we've got your your regular cruise control up here. We've got your audio controls, and then up here we have something that's called adaptive cruise control. So by hitting this button, uh, turning on your your cruise control, you'll see that coming up on the dash right here. So you turn that on, and then you can actually set the distance, and you'll see that little cursor. See how it's gonna. Uh, say okay this is th th there'll be a little vehicle there and it says this is how far you want to be from the next closest vehicle and then you hit it again it comes a little bit closer you hit it again it comes a little bit closer until you're basically uh, closer up to the vehicle and the nice thing with adaptive cruise control is is you could set your cruise at let's say uh, 100 kilometers an hour and you pull up uh, up to another vehicle that's uh, a little bit slower than you, it's actually gonna slow down the vehicle to let's say that 90 kilometers an hour that the other vehicles do, and it's gonna set that distance, it's gonna keep up. If that other vehicle picks up, it will just kinda come along with you. So uh, that's the uh, adaptive cruise, cruise control. It also has uh, lane assist. So this little steering wheel on uh, the center here shows that it's actually on. This one shows that it's off. So what that basically means is that it identifies where the lines on the vehicle are, uh, or the lines on the road are, and it'll keep you between that. It'll give you some assist in the steering wheel. It'll actually give you an alert or an assist or both, depending on how you set your um, set up the vehicle. Something that is completely new, something that we don't have in any other uh, Ford vehicles is this heads-up display. So uh, you'll have to come right in front of it to be able to see what I see. So right now, um, can you see it? I think so. Uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, so you can see that it shows that I'm doing zero kilometers an hour. It actually shows if I've got my uh, uh, lane assist on or off. Uh, it shows if I've got my my um, adaptive cruise control that I just showed you and changing changing that. So uh, it tells us some uh, some key things without having to uh, put your eyes uh, down. You can actually just keep your eyes forward and it's, it's not obstructive, and you can actually set the distance of that um, heads-up display right here. So this button right here sets up uh, the heads-up display, so you can decide to turn it on or off uh, right here, so you could actually hit that, and that goes off, and you'll notice this whole screen actually comes down. So that's pretty neat, so if it's something that you didn't like, uh, or let's say if it's something around town you don't want, but something when you're on the highway you want it, you could turn it on or off and it's pretty simple uh, just with that. The other thing is uh, within the heads up display, you could change the type of uh, uh, the adjustment of it. So by going to adjustments, you could change the position, 
uh, where it's actually physically located. You could uh, um, adjust the brightness of it and you could adjust the actual size of what's the display. Because depending on how close you are to the vehicle, you might want to change uh, uh, that specific setting. So that's the heads up display as well as the content. You could change different things in here. You can add things, you could uh, remove things. You have the distance indicator from the adaptive cruise control. You could see an incoming call, phone call, that somebody might be giving you a call and you could see who's actually on there. Uh, you can see the lane keeping uh, assist. It actually also gives you the navigation. So if you've got navigation set up to go to a specific location, it'll tell you when to turn. And you can see the content here. Uh, if you look at the heads up display, right now we've got navigation. So if I turn that off, there goes that icon. Uh, if I uh, turn off the lane keeping system, uh, that's what it looks like. You got a heads up display in the all new 2020, which is really, really neat. Um, you also have um, your, uh, uh, your super comfy, obviously, steering wheel here. We have automatic wipers uh, on and off. Uh, we've got all that uh, basically on these two, uh, uh, two switches here. This is ob obviously your lane, um, lane keeping assist here. That's not in the 2019, so that's available in the 2020. Um, and over far off on this side, we've got our, uh, our headlight settings. So uh, this is off. This is just the parking lights. This is the automatic headlights. That's where you usually keep it on. So it automatically turns on and off as it gets brighter or darker outside. And you can override that just by putting the headlights on. Uh, you also have your uh, fog lamps. So by hitting that button, it actually lights up on the dash, uh, the fog lamps. So if I turn that, you'll see if the fog lamps are on or off. Uh, you could have it on the automatic uh, function and once it's set once it will automatically turn on with the fog lamps on automatically. We have the, the um, uh, rear hatch so that opens up the rear hatch and this opens up the uh, gas cap, the fuel door. Okay, So uh, some of the neat things that are different about the 2020 uh, sit in the cockpit is a whole bunch of things. Uh, it's a significantly cleaner and gives you a lot more options than you did in the 20, uh, 2019. In the center stack, you're gonna notice a big departure from the 2019, which is a rotary dial. So we've got a rotary dial here to turn it in and put it in gear. Um, couple neat part about the rotary dial, it uh, takes up a lot less room. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, secondly, it's got a really neat feature that if you put it into drive, and you were to open up the the door it actually automatically turns it back into park so that way you weren't getting out of the vehicle and then the vehicle goes without you so that's a pretty neat feature here it's got a electronic parking brake so the nice thing about the electronic parking brake is that i can actually set the parking brake and it'll come up as a little button over here uh, to say that it's on okay so there's there's that button it says the park electric the parking brakes on so typically when you're uh, if you've got a parking brake on you can't uh, leave the neat part about this because it's electronic actually I could actually put this in drive and the vehicle holds but as, as soon as I hit the gas it disengages the electronic parking brake and so therefore you don't have to actually turn it off you can if you wanted to you can um, you can turn that off by just hitting the, the uh, on the downside of it uh, this is the auto hold. This is a really neat feature. Uh, if you've got that on, that basically holds the vehicle uh, as you come to a stop. It will just hold the vehicle there and you don't need to have your foot on the brake. So it just does it automatically. It holds the vehicle and as soon as you hit the gas again, it propels you forward. And then if you come to a full stop, it holds you again without having your foot on the brake. So it's like an kind of like an automatic braking system so the vehicle is not creeping forward like a, a typical automatic does when you just release your foot off the brake it, it gives you more comfort on your foot if you're in traffic or if you're in a drive through or whatever it might be uh, 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 it's a really really neat feature uh, you also have um, uh, a, a active parking uh, assist so that's a, a upgraded feature in the 2020 uh, it makes parking the vehicle uh, pretty neat. You hit that button, you select a, uh, whether you're parallel parking or you're parking into a stall, uh, it can do that automatically. And over here is your um, a rear uh, parking alert or front or rear parking alert because it's got set up on both. Turn off that alert on or off uh, either way. Um, this vehicle is equipped with a moonroof. 
and you'll see that that's very very similar to the 2019 uh, uh, as a moonroof it lets in a ton a ton of light uh, and makes the cabin feel a lot bigger a couple things i want to show you uh, on the rear of the vehicle the rear seats are all also as well covered all in leather you've got um, basically a armrest here or cup holders uh, uh, for that if you don't have a passenger in the middle it also gives you um, your power inverter right here uh, just like the 2019s uh, but one thing that's unique about the 2020s is that it actually has a sliding rear seat so i'm six foot three and that front seat was set where where i was actually i could have moved forward a little bit and uh and it gives you ample a, a ample room so if you wanted more cargo room you could obviously bring it forward if you've got smaller children or people that are smaller than me which is most people uh, you could you could move the seat and that does it both on this side and on this side so actually there's the seat belts holding the back so there it is so um yeah that's the uh second row of this let's show you the rear hatch so um the escape basically invented this uh back in 2013 just have the key on your person and you kick the rear, the hatch automatically opens up. What you need that for is if you've got groceries, if you've got something in your hands and you just want to put inside, um, inside without having to find the button, find the keys, uh, you could put it right there. This one has a nice cargo mat installed. This is installed at the dealership. Um, and it's actually uh, pretty pretty cool. It looks it's got the nice escape uh, logo in there. It fits in there right nice. So that protects uh, you know if you put your dogs back there or if you put anything that's dirty. Um, I'm not saying your dogs are dirty, but let's say you were out in the trail or something like that. They might have got dirty. So, anyways, uh, that's the um, uh, that's the rear hatch. It also has a couple storage compartments uh, under here, which has got the spare tire and your jack and right here a fuel filler so you might need this in case you ran out of fuel so right here um, that fuel door remember you can't open it from the outside you actually have to open it from the inside uh, with the button so this if you were ever uh, needing or if it's the first time you've ever had a Ford you'll realize there's no fuel caps and we haven't had fuel caps for years and years and years uh, it's actually um, just an easy fill uh, fuel but if you do need to put a, a jerry can worth of fuel in there you actually have to use this in order to um, to basically fill it up so that's uh, just in case you a little tip all of our fords have one of these located somewhere in the vehicle so uh, okay uh, close the hatch you could use uh, the button uh, the button on your key uh, 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 your key or you can use uh, yeah, your foot pedal as well or not your foot pedal, your foot. Use it as a pedal. <laughs> Use it on the pedal. Um, okay, so tell us what you think. This is the all new 2020 uh, Escape Titanium Hybrid versus the 2019. It's, there's some substantial differences between the two vehicles uh, from styling features uh, to interior creature comforts uh, to even powertrain availabilities. Uh, the, the previous model was not available in a hybrid. We have a hybrid available model. We also have a plug-in hybrid that's coming very shortly. We have some get, getting built right now or s shortly um, in, the, in the near uh, future getting built for us, which will be a plug-in feature. Um, anyways, I love it. Some really, really neat features. And, uh, but tell us what you uh, want to see. Tell us if you want to see any other videos. Uh, leave a comment if you like this one. Um, like our page, subscribe to our channel, and thanks for watching. Really, really appreciate it.